The QPR podcast is sponsored by XL Environmental, a pest control company based in Northall and the Southeast. They provide for all your pest control needs, along with bird control, hazardous waste removal and ground maintenance. And they're Rangers fans, so if you call them on 0845 11 6 11, mention our podcast for a 10% discount. QPR, QPR, we Rangers are on the Hello and welcome to Open All Ours, the QPR podcast and a very special edition we've got this evening. We've been going for nearly five seasons now, over 150 episodes, but we have never tried anything like what we're going to try tonight. Um, we usually do the pod with three or four of us, um, but tonight there are loads of us. We've probably got 12 or 13 of us in the studio. Um, that's because it's half term this week and the kids are off school and so we are having a Junior Ours special where we have invited uh, six young QPR fans in to show three of us old podcasters a thing or two. Uh, the plan is they're going to keep us quiet and run the show tonight. They're going to introduce themselves in a minute, but not only do we have these guys in the studio with us, we also have a very, very special man behind the mic with us. None other than crowd favourite and friend of the podcast, Ali Fallin. <laughs> Um, he's here to answer all our questions. It's great because it means we don't have to talk about Saturday very much. Um, we're going to crack on with it in, in a minute and turn the questions over to Ali. Um, but before, let's do some introductions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around the table, including us oh, and you, Ali. <laughs> and we want you to say your name, age, your first QPR oh, game oh, and your all-time favourite QPR player. So, who wants to start? Okay, um, I'm Alfie. My favourite QPR game was um, at Middlesbrough, where we won 3-0 um, a few years back. Um, my all-time favourite player would be Adele Tarat, but my play favourite player this season is probably Grant Hall. Or, yeah. Okay. My name is Nancy, I'm 11. My first QPR game was against Middlesbrough, where we won 3-0. And my favourite player is probably Emil Tarrant. Okay. My name is Charlie, I'm, not, I'm uh, 9 years old, nearly 10. Um, my first game was in Middlesbrough, when we won 3-0. Uh, my all-time favourite player is probably... I don't trap. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we should have read this. <laughs> my name's Billy, I'm 11, and my first game was QPR v Blackpool, where we drew 1 1. And my favourite player is actually Alejandro Ford. Hey! <laughs> my name is George, I'm 8 years old. Uh, my first game was QPR Rochdale when we lost 2-0. <laughs> and my favourite player is Charlie Austin. Um, I'm Lily, I'm 14, and my first match was Illsbury away in 2002. And my favourite player is, of course, Abby. Very <laughs> good. Go on, Paul. I'm Paul Finney and I'm 46 and my first game was against Coventry and we lost and um, I've been coming back ever since to see a win. It's going well. Uh, my name is Chris and I'm a little bit younger than Paul. Um, oh, you what? <laughs> my first game was about 97 and uh, we beat Leicester 1-0. Uh, I'm David, younger than I look, 36 and three quarters. First game was Aston Villa at home, 1-0 win in 1986. Favourite ever player, Andy Sinton, but the man on my left is a lot more interesting. Oh, I want to say my favourite player. Well, we all want to know that, so go on. Alan McDonald, but, 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 Alan yeah, McDonald yeah, yeah, or John Byrne? Joe Sibbersing, but no, um, of course, it was Alan McDonald followed by Ali Fullman. Um, yeah, my name is Alejandro Fallin, and my favourite player is probably Alejandro Fallin. Okay. Um, yeah, my first game was um, Nottingham Forest, no, yeah, Nottingham Forest at home, 2009. Um, and yeah, I will, I will agree with the with the kids here, uh, in between Adel Tarat and Charlie Austin. 
Yeah, my favourite players. Yeah. Good choice. And we have one last. <laughs> <laughs> we have one last man to our to your left. Introduce yes. yourself. Hi, I'm Tiziano, and I'm seven years old. And and who's your favourite QPR player? Charlie Austin. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tiziana, just for people that are listening, who 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 are you here with tonight? Who brought you here? My dad. And who's your dad? Ali. <laughs> Ali's your dad. Yeah. So Ali brought his son Tiziana, and his favourite player is Charlie Austin. <laughs> Very clear. Um, okay, so um, we probably will we will come on to Saturday uh, in a minute, but before we do that, we're going to crack on with the questions that our junior podcasters have brought with us, brought with them, beg your pardon. Billy, first question to you for Ali. Um, my question is, um, what's the best thing about playing for QPR? Um, yeah, I think QPR is, um, is very similar to Argentina. Um, very cosy, uh, familiar club. Um, the, the, the ground love to rot is very nice and tidy um, you feel the love uh, and the pressure as well from, from fans and that make it like uh, very special uh, I love to play at home and yeah I love my life here in West London because the last time that we saw you which was uh, nearly a year ago you weren't sure you came in and, and spent the night talking to us on the podcast and you weren't sure if things were going to quite continue for you, but it's, it's kind of worked out, yeah, right? It's, or a QPR, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. It's been the, the case in the last few years, obviously, because the injuries, but um, yeah, I'm happy to say um, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling good and I'm, uh, I, I don't well, I'm playing football, which is the main thing, and um, yeah. How's the, how's the injury at the moment, Ali? I mean, I know obviously how's the comparison from what's happened before, but I know you picked up a knock a couple of weeks ago, so can we expect you to see you back in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, um, we're trying to, to get as soon as possible. To be fair, um, yeah, it's just my quad, it's not even on my knee. Um, I get a very tight quad and probably a little, little tear of the, on that. Um, yeah, I tried on Friday. I didn't train all week last week and try on Friday and it was quite right to, yet, so we tried to do it right. Alpha, you got a question. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ali, who were your footballing inspirations when you were growing up? Like, who wanted you, who made you want to be a footballer? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, we were up playing football. It wasn't a lot of information back then. Uh, we used to watch on TV, but that was that was said. No video games. No, you, you guys have a lot more information than what we get. But yeah, always, always the likes of uh, say in Argentina, uh, Roman Riquelme, uh, Maradona, uh, Redondo, in that time. Also the big names as Zidane, Pirlo, always been uh, my my favorites. I always like the the players who are not the sharpest, not the quickest, but the, the, the brainers, you know, they, they think about the game and, and, and they control and dominate games by, by intelligence. I, I like more that. George, did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, you, I know you like futsal. Uh, what's your favourite trick in...? Um, do you see Neymar? Yeah. Yes, uh, the trick. That is my favorite trick. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do it, but <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's futsal is really nice and it's really good. And yeah, you learn a lot, skill, and, and everything, pass and move. You need a lot. It's very complete game. And yeah, in Argentina we play a lot as a kid. I do it twice a week, so... That's good, that's good. What's your favourite trick, George? Uh, probably the Ronaldo whiplash. <laughs> whoa, 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 Hang on. Do you know that one? Hang on. What's the Ronaldo whiplash? Yeah. What's the Ronaldo whiplash? Well, it's when you do, like, a step over, then right. you flick it onto your other foot, then you score. Oh, that one! Yeah. And you could have that, George, if you got yeah. that down to a final. Yeah. yeah. I used to try that, but our goalkeeper, who was playing behind me, didn't appreciate it at the time. <laughs> uh, Lily? Um, what's your best match, you think, for QPR that you've played? 
Um, yeah, it's been it's been long, six seven years here, so I have many, a lot of nice memories. Um, obviously, play the like uh, playing against the likes of the bigger sides in Premier League is is very, is very nice. Um, Man City at home, we we play very well. The record against Chelsea is really good as well. My record, so I really enjoy playing them. Like your record against yeah. Them. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, probably in them, and also you know, in Championship, uh, we have some games, uh, especially with the on the Neil Warnock where we were like uh, on the very very top in, in every sense of the game, and and we really enjoy as well. Uh. Okay, uh, yeah. Charlie. Um, my question is, what do you? What do you hate most about training? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, yeah, I, I love training. Um, don't get me wrong, but uh, I would say probably uh, shape and tactically mm. is a bit boring. I don't mind run. Uh, the fitness part of the, you know, I, I like to run. If you have to do hard hard work, and I think uh, I enjoy that part, but. It's, it's very important the tactically and the shape, but it's very boring. And yeah, when it's cold here in England, it's cold, and it's 40 minutes like start, stop, start, stop. It's not really nice. How, how much do players respond to coaching about tactics and shape, or and how much is just instinct? No, no. I, I think it changed uh, as well as I said before with information you, the, the manager have now. You know, they are uh, they can know everything now. If you you go that side, other side. If you right foot, left foot. If you do this, if you, they they can have that kind of information, which is mm. crucial in the game now. But I mean, so. for you, the player, how much of it in a game are you thinking? Oh, I'm not supposed to be standing here, or I need to push on that side. And how much are you just playing on instinct? Yeah, it does, it does play a role. Uh, very important. Yeah, when saying that, Saturday was a little bit of um, you know when you prepare something. And sometimes don't, don't doesn't go in that way. Uh, it change, it change games, you know. So come so, on then, let's talk about Saturday. You you weren't playing, so we 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 can't blame you. But what what's your view on it? <laughs> Listen, uh, yeah, you will, we, I will come across people saying, ah, I, you didn't play. I did play at uh, their house, at their uh, away, and they beat us four 0 as well, and, and we've suffered practically all the same. We suffer the other day. Um, it's, yes, and one of our games where where things go wrong and and it's it's it's, it's, it's not nice to see you know the team suffer uh, in the pitch. Uh, it's not not trying. It's just all to to see them struggling. Um, it happened last time. Um, it's a shame. Uh, we really feel for for the fans because we know the, the fans wait for that games kind of games. You know that we are important. And an important for us as well. Um, but yeah, for some reason, uh, this season has been a nightmare. All them, so it hasn't been an easy season. Um, we want to finish as strong as we we can. And but obviously, we know that, that, that we haven't been uh, uh, what we would expect from from us to be. So yeah. Um, a lot of people, including me, thought part of the reason we didn't do so well on Saturday was because you weren't playing. <laughs> and you were probably far too modest to... Uh, but uh, were, you there, what, were you there at the game? Were you watching the game? Or were you at, were you at home sort of recovering? Um, no, I, I had training in the morning and, and the training around. Uh, so I was getting late to the game, rushing in the traffic, so I decided just to drop at home and watch it on TV. Sometimes uh, it's a different perspective, you know, to see on TV and, and have a different picture, really. Um, you see a different side of the of the game, so yeah, it, it was it was painful to watch anyway because, as I said before, you see your teammates like really struggling, and in in terms of play, me playing or me not playing, I play against them and they beat us for nil and yeah. I didn't see the ball, so you know mm. it's, it's just one of those things. And I, I think sorry, I, I think uh, going back to Saturday, it's what film have got like the Indians saying over us whatever happens wherever it is whatever score we've got they hammer us um, Saturday wasn't acceptable to a lot of supporters not because of any other reason that Fulham just beat us every time and I think the fans are getting sick of it so next time I play Fulham I'm going to go swimming 
<laughs> and um, and like just go juggle or something because it, whatever it is we, we can turn up we can say Messi Ronaldo we can probably say half the England team yeah. whatever it is we've is it sometimes what well, well, in a yeah, serious way have, yeah. does it become like a mental block sometimes yeah, I, I don't know I, it is true that I can't I, or awful record against them I hate to play against them that, that is a fact yeah. because I, I've been playing when we lost 6-0 uh, there you know mm. when you go with Samora and the and score for fun and we, I, I didn't have good time so the only time I, I win against them was uh, uh, when Nadel scored twice at home uh, but yeah Listen, it's, it's just uh, we know the fans are, are disappointed and, and, and they're in the right so to, to, to express themselves and, and you know uh, lucky that we are not in Argentina or these countries you know because we will be a, a lot worse. Um, probably the, the, the thing I don't like here in, in, in like no QPR but in London is you play derbies. Too many, you have too many derbies. I, I don't like that that that, that part. Mm. You play against me, well, it's a derby. You play against this, uh, you know, Fulham is a derby, Chelsea is a derby. Uh, yeah, but in, in, in the press, you know, are more of course, of course, of course, of course, so, of course. Yeah. But in Argentina, you have one. Yeah. So that 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 resumes everything. You know, it changed the picture completely. You know, it, it does. Um, but it's different, different culture, different way to approach. Um, but yeah. So when you play next season, we beat them twice, you come and celebrate in front of the G-Pop. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nancy, you have a question. Why is QPR special to you? <sighs> QPR is, is special to me uh, because um, I've been for such a long time here. That wasn't the kids, that was... Yeah, yeah, that noise was spinning. Like that noise was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, QPR is special. I've been seven years here. Um, I really love it. I, I love everything about it. Um, I really enjoy my life. This has been in West London since one year old, and he's growing up here. So uh, it, it's really nice to see him growing up here. And, and Who so speaks better great. English? Oh, not the two of you. He's teaching me all the, at the time, correcting me. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's been great. I have lovely memories, not so good ones. But um, a nice bond with the people, uh, with the fans, with everyone in the club. So it make, made make it really, really special. Um, so I, hopefully we can carry on for many years. Um, and what, what do you like about living in London? This is to Tiziano. <laughs> he, he likes what do you him. like about London? Do, do you like living in London? <laughs> that was a shrug. Yeah, yeah. Me too. The thing is, the thing with him is, uh, he's always um, waiting when this this time of the year come. He's waiting to see the grandpas and uh, you know, my my family uh, back in Argentina. So when you, but he loves it. They are London. <laughs> he loves to live here. He's a keep your fan as well. She's little. Um, yeah. what's, what's the biggest difference between living in London and Argentina? Would you say uh, culturally wise? Nah, it's just um, it's just different for me. I love London. I love the the life here. And Argentina at the moment is not really it's not great to for raise your your son. Uh, really, it's it's not safe environment. Yeah, it's not it's not great. The the country is not in the great condition. The country is beautiful, but it's not in great conditions too. Oh really? Yeah, it's it's struggling in many many points, many aspects. Okay. So, um, so Ali, so your contract is until the end of the season. <laughs> well, there we go again. And this is like the question we ask you every time <laughs> <laughs> you come on the podcast. So you may as well just answer answer it for us now. What yeah. what um, it's February now, so there must start to be either discussions about you staying or your, you must be starting to think about the next move. No, no. This year, I say, you know, I need to play this year, so. Uh, I play so far twenty about twenty games already, um, which is I've been mean, almost every game like fit to play uh, early in the uh, early in the season. I didn't play much uh, under Chris, but uh, since then I, I play a lot and, and I'm happy with that. And I want to finish playing fit, and the rest it will take care of itself. You know, uh, and I'm not really concerned about the next season. Really. Mm. Billy. Yeah. Um, what was the best game you've ever been involved in? Like, just ever, not just for QPR. Well, we'll ask that in two parts. Was the best game you've ever been involved in? 
Number one and number two, what's your best QPR game you've ever been involved in? Um, I will say in QPR, I will say uh, yeah, Man City at home, the, free, the night we lost 3 2. I really, really enjoyed that. And I think every fans, every, everyone in the stadium, like, was, we lost 3 2. Well, you, you feel like. And that was a defeat. Yeah. 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 That was a defeat, and everyone feel like we were just battered them. Mm-hmm. And they were the best team in the league. Um, even them saying, like, in, after the match, mm-hmm. like, saying, like, we said it's a very good team. And so that was very enjoyable. Um, then I have I play with on the for my national team on the and in the World Cup it was under 17 but still always it's nice to play you know defending your colours of the national you know and yeah. who was in that team with you? Um, yeah, we have good players. We have Garay, Di Maria, Biglia. Yeah, we have um, Gago as well, Fernando Gago. What about them then? <laughs> <laughs> they had a good side. They, they take a good side. Like, uh, they, 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 they was, no, they was a little bit older than me. <laughs> Just son checking up on you. Um, tell us, you've seen a lot of managers uh, in your time at QPR. I haven't actually added them up, but it must be approaching a dozen. How's how's uh, working under Jimmy Floyd? How, how are you responding to it? How are the players feeling about it? Um. Well, Jimmy is very, uh, very young, and uh, he started his his journey as a manager very recently. Um, he's been as a, as a footballer. He play at high level, and he play in a lot of leagues, different leagues, different countries, which add experience to him. And his his view on football is are really good. And I, I like the mentality of him. Um, he's very very strict and then he trains really hard, very demanding. Um, and yeah, I will take as a manager you can see it will take time to 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 everyone to click. Um, as we were talking we we felt like we, we made a small progress uh, across the, on, on the team. The other day it was like a, a big knockout for us, like step back really. Um, so we need to concentrate now on get back on the road and try to keep progressing because um, under him you can you can say what you can discuss you can arguments but uh, in terms of solid we were very, very solid you know we were very difficult play uh, team to play um, and then we start to look a bit better with the games and each which was a good performance and we create a lot of chances as well we were lacking of um, so yeah, we need to try to to think positive and to finish the, the season as, as strong as, as we can. Uh, Jimmy is up to it, in, and and we we start to, to to understand what he want really. What are the aims for now for the rest of the season? Yeah, it's difficult. It's been it's been a you know it's not just coming. It's, that doesn't come just to us. You know, it's been a lot of changes from the beginning. Uh, we changed manager. Twice, and then in this in January window, we they lost another three four players. New people come, so it's it's not really it's not really a it's something that you, you can see that happening. You know? So mm-hmm. now for us, it's just about to to try to finish as as strong as, as we can, um, and try to give some to find that identity and, and try to play some some serious and, and good football. Push for the playoffs. It's, I don't see that honestly. It's still it's, in championship. It's still, I still think that if you manage to win mm. uh, four or five games on the road, which anyone can do in this league, uh, you will definitely be close. But we haven't been that consistent this season. To to you know, we haven't had that run. We have three games, so winning three games continues under Chris, and that was it. It's very difficult when you cannot really. Uh, get that 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 run, that positive run.
Yeah. If, we, if we make the playoffs, I will do a podcast in a mankini. <laughs> don't make okay. us not. Don't make us wish okay. that we don't make okay. the playoffs. We make the playoffs. No one definitely, definitely. <laughs> now, 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 you're making me think that I don't want QPR to I'm make the playoffs. I'm happy. I'll even go to the game of one as well. <laughs> yeah, George. We we asked Ali about the current manager. You had a question about managers, didn't you? Oh yeah. Uh, out of all the managers you ha- you've had. Who's the best one? Um, as a footballer, I'm a, I'm a person who likes to... I love to talk about the game and, and analyse the game. Uh, I'm also... Um, I can say that I'm a good reader of, of what happened on the pitch. So, as with the manager we have, I always try to take the best of them. It's not all the case to be who is the best or who is the worst. You always have uh, positive things to take of each one, and and then come to experience-wise, uh, in terms of results and in terms of achieving, which we obviously with with Neil Warnock we uh, we achieve promotion and we really really everyone really really enjoy that year, and uh, so yeah, of, all day long I would say Neil Warnock, um, I think uh, it's not like the most tactically intelligent manager, but in terms of the game. But as a management and as a bring the best out of player, it's probably it's not better than him. Seven promotions, eight, seven, eight promotions, he speak for himself. So I would say, yeah, I would say need one more, yeah. Archie. Alfie. Alfie, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would be your key advice for any young footballer? Um... It will be just work really hard. Um, always try to enjoy. That's the main thing. Enjoy what you're doing. Love what you're doing because it's key. Uh, football is all about to love the game and and to be carry on. You always have to carry on. Yeah, that's a matter. Uh, people will say you you, you are not know enough or you can't do it. It's, that, that is the the things we do along the way, but um, you need to carry on and do all you can to for for make your dream come true. You know, I live in my dream, and I, I want to be a footballer. I am, and I live in it every day, every single day. So did, did I'm very grateful. Did people say to you when you were younger? Oh, of course. A oh, of course. Ah, you too slow. You never gonna prefer the vision. When I, you play in second division, you see um, the, the game should be, uh, tends to be more fighting, physical. Uh, you know, you you don't have enough. You know, and you know, when it comes Premier League, they say no, it's slow. You cannot play, and I play Premier League. So it's just about what you believe in, or what you thinking, and, and what, how hard you work to to get it to. What advice? We, there'll be a lot of people, a lot of youngsters listening who. Want to be a footballer? What would be, what's the key bit of advice that you got and that you would pass on to them? Yeah, it's um, uh, I think it, uh, as, as the game getting serious, first enjoyment and, and love what you do. You need to put that. If you don't don't have that passion and that love for the game, uh, you, you get nowhere. Um, and it's difficult to get that, that, that motivation, that, that love, that, that, that professionality. Uh, it's not easy. It's, a, it's becoming a routine if you have the good foundations, you know. Um, but uh, after that, uh, know, 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 knowing your limitations, I think, is uh, key in, in this game. Know, know, knowing what you do wrong, what is the worst of you. To, to try to avoid, like, say me. Everyone say I'm very slow and this and that. I'm probably the slowest player ever after three ACS. <laughs> is that what you would say is your, like, like, your limitation? For example, yeah, for, for example, there is no, I have no pace, three ACS and three years, and I'm still able to be out there and playing and performing. I don't care what uh, any anybody say. At this level, performing after what I went through, I, I don't know how many of people can do that. But I, I have no pace, I, I know this. I just play with my rent, so it's not, it's not. I know that if I have the ball a certain amount of time in my in my feet, I will look slow, 
I will lose the ball. So I, what I do wrong is that. So okay, I'm trying to play two touches. Why? And, and all your strengths come through. You know, mm. you know, it's the, uh, you can express then your, your strengths. Um, I have, I, I, I probably read the game and I, I know where the ball coming, where it have to be. Yeah. So that's my, you know, that is my quick thinking. My Three ACLs, when you say that, that's incredible, yeah. really. That used to be something that would just finish someone's career. Oh, of course. Back in the time, just one of it, that one. Who, how, so, yeah. who, what other players have had three ACLs and have come back from Yeah, that? Um, it's, it's not. There is a, you will surprise yourself when you, once you get into the, 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 these injuries, how many players get that mm. this injury. It's, and it's, it's becoming like... Crazy, actually. Every season is more and more. I don't know why it's really uh, the because, but it's crazy. It's scary. But yeah, you have like I don't know the, the famous one, Ronaldo have mm. like free, and then it's a Spanish guy who's nearly forty and still playing, um, and he have free as well. Um, Rossi, Rossi, Giuseppe Rossi now. It's, it's a, a Levante, Italian international. A lot of struggle. Mm. So it's, it's, it's nice to see, you know, uh, Taylor from Newcastle uh, now is in Hull City. He's been a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, Lily? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, when you get all these injuries, where's the determination from to like recover from them? Um, I, I think you, the way you grow up, as I said before, the, the foundation you have, you're everything like play a, a role in, on, in it you know I, I've been raised by 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 that I just always give your best I, I, I couldn't really there was there were no choice for me it's not like I had as I said no it was always much like no I just leave it and I do another thing there was no choice for me it was just one way and just trying to be back if I had the possibility obviously no not silly I'm not saying silly but I have to do it to prove myself and and, and to un, to be in peace with myself. Really, um, I do everything. Luckily, I'm, I'm playing again, and I hopefully I can play for many years to to really prove a point and that you can come back from this injury. And maybe in the future we are be a good uh, example for for those players who have a, a, a tough time with injuries. And we've got a question now from Tiziano. What's for dinner? Yeah. yeah. When am I getting my pocket money? <laughs> what position would you be instead of mid? Um, good question. Um, <laughs> definitely not winger. I'm not <laughs> saying they have no pace. I, I would be able to play that position. Uh, I probably would like to be a striker like Charlie Austin, scoring goals and being the man. Uh, always in the front of the page of the new paper and, you know, getting all the. If, if he was a striker, would you then say he was your favourite player? <laughs> or still be Charlie Austin? Mm, yeah. <laughs> to, 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 to be fair, your father has scored some pretty cracking goals this time, so he's not doing too bad when he gets in front of that net. <laughs> do, you, do you play football with your dad in the garden, Tiziana? Mm, we don't have a garden, but sometimes we do go to the park. Go to the park but you and don't have a garden, you have a patio, because no. we've heard all about how it nearly burnt down. Right? Yeah. In, from, 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 that was the last podcast that yeah, you were on. Does he like to do barbecue? If you want to hear that story, not, listen, he's, yeah, he's listen to happy. the last he's time. I'm happy with now, with a place where we are, because we have a garden. Really. Charlie? Um, my question is what is your favourite? What was your favourite goal you scored for QPR? For QPR? I um, haven't, haven't scored many, to be fair with you, but um, uh, Chef, Sheffield United at home. That's a nice goal, from the side of the box. Yeah, nice, nice finish. Nancy? Um, what's the favourite player you've ever played with at QPR? <sighs> yeah, um... Fernando, at QPR. <laughs> the fall-ins are just conferring on the answer <laughs> for this one. Yeah, this is not everything out. What I like, <laughs> what I don't like, what I mean. Players, um, I would say yeah, in between going back to between Adele, I really enjoy playing with that other, you know, Adele, Charlie, Nico, Nico Granjar as well. Is really talented and surprised me a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, we always used to think Adele and you had this sort of chemistry. Um, yeah. And could sort of almost knew what the other was going to do. Yeah, I would really enjoy that. Yeah. Sometimes you click with players and it's just, that, that, that's a necessary, you have to be the, the most amazing player, but you click with that player and, you know, Sean Derry, the partnership, you know, the, the, the chemistry we have, it was, uh, it was great. Do you keep in touch with Adele? Uh, yes, any other time, yes. Oh, good. You That's not yeah. <laughs> No reason. Yeah, no reason. But <laughs> give us his number after so we can get on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I think George has got another question. Uh, do you like playing in England or Argentina? Um, I like both of them. I really enjoy everything. When I, do. I did like as well when I went to Italy, short spell, a few years back. Uh, as experience was really really nice. I get to play uh, Juventus Stadium and uh, Milan Stadium, which are amazing, very be- huge. Um, I love every every every, every football pitch. Billy, when you got and um, when you did get sent on loan to Italy, how did you feel? Like because you got sent on loan, um, yeah, it was my decision really. Was I, I pushed to to get away? Really, I, I feel like I needed and at the time uh, Harry Renner didn't really count on me, so he let me go. Um, was an experience didn't really quite work out, but probably in in, in, the, in the in the right side. I'm still here at KPI. If he, that work work out, maybe I, I should I like, move after that to Italy. So I'm still here. So yeah, happy days. We now have a question from Paul, 46, from Barnet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still learning the game. Now, Ali, I'm just thinking, are you busy during June at all? Um, there's a tournament going on in France, the European Championships. I'll stick a good word in. We can use my mum's birth certificate. How do you fancy playing for Northern Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, like, I'll teach you the words. Ulster fry. I'll be taken in consideration. Okay, but red lemonade, Ulster fry, and anyone sitting, just say, shut your beak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you not qualify under residency, though, for an EU country now? Though? Hey, this is getting serious. In all seriousness, I know. Paul's, Paul's question, I mean... No, it wasn't who's, who's going to turn out for the It's now going to turn for the better. Can, do, can you not qualify for... <laughs> to play, to uh, play for an EU country now? Is that not how it works? You've been here so long? Uh, I think I have nothing to do with that any, anyway. I think if someone asks you... I haven't played for the, uh, the senior national team, so... Yeah. So we can make it happen. We'll get on to, my, we'll get on to Michael O'Neill tomorrow. You got my number, you got my number. <laughs> so do you or do you not want to play for Northern Ireland in the Euros in the summer? <laughs> You have to answer it here. I say that, we'll put it in consideration. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see, I'll teach you the words, Ali. I'll just say be fair. I'm going out there for two games anyway. See, that got serious quickly, didn't it? Uh, Ali, I've got a question for you as well. Um, I want to know, are you still helping your friend out in the coffee shop? Uh, last time we spoke to you, um, this is when you weren't playing so much. Uh, to keep yourself busy, you were, you, were, you were serving people coffee. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing that. I love to be, to be there every day, to be honest with you. A little bit after training, just relax and yeah, we have a coffee together, we talk about things. I serve a few coffee to customers every day and go home happy. Yeah. We, we introducing we have a license to send alcohol now. Ooh. So we're gonna open we're preparing to open maybe first uh, first and Friday's evening wine and uh, <laughs> prosciutto uh, Spanish pro, prosciutto ham. So this is tap tap. Some maybe, yeah. right. All right, we'll see you there. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be good. Maybe, yeah, maybe you listen to us on the guitar as well. Maybe we can, oh, I love uh, it. It's, it's, an authentic, it's an authentic Northern Irish bar open for the Euros. Not that your father drinks, dear. No, 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 I was just going to say to Nancy, yeah, that's a good excuse no. for me to go out. We just drink lem- red no, lemonade. No, not. Red lemonade. All well, right, we have a few more minutes left, so the last few questions, and I know George has another question, so... <laughs> go on, George. Come on, go for it, George. podcast, I think, it's George. Yeah. What's your favourite thing about football? Um, that would be first of all, most is doing what I love. For, I I've been playing football since age of four, since I have memory really. I can remember, um, and I love ga- game day. I really really love game days. Like all about them from start to to finish. Like waking up early. Nice breakfast. Already start to switch in your mind now. The way to the stadium, 
you know, the fans come across, you know, wishing you well, uh, enjoying the game, you know. Um, yeah, hopefully always with a win. So, yeah, I really enjoy the game days. My favourite thing about football is all about winning. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is the right mentality. <laughs> Right, anybody got one last question before we go on to the very, very last bit? Good, we've almost exhausted. Ah, I see someone looking in the corner who looks like he has a question. <laughs> no? Okay, right. So, to finish off, um, before um, our junior podcasters came on, we asked everybody to write down what they love about QPR. So, we're going to go around all of them and say, I love QPR because... And then you're going to tell us why. And then, Ali, we're going to finish with you, and you can tell us why. So why don't we start in reverse order from, from how we started before, and we'll start with you. Oh, sorry. Lily, I missed you. <laughs> I couldn't see that. Lily, I love QPR because... I love QPR because my dad forced me to. <laughs> <laughs> Never had an option. Never had an option. That wasn't what you were supposed to say. <laughs> Sorry. George. I love QPR because the atmosphere. It's good. Where do you sit, George? Uh, L L U. Uh, L U. L U. Yeah. So that's in the upper loft, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think I can hear you from there. <laughs> <laughs> Billy. I love QPR because I love going to the games with my dad and singing all the best songs, especially when we win. Charlie? I love QPR because if I, if I say I don't, my dad will kill me. <laughs> 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 you can spot a theme there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nancy? I love QPR because I've been watching them since I was five and they got to Wembley, which I went to see. Oh, that's a good one. Alfie? Uh, I love QPR because I love the thrill of just going to the game and going there from the, um, the generations with my dad and going down and hopefully I can take my kids there. Um, Jump big on a bit on you. <laughs> well, seeing as your brother said I go because my dad makes How old are you? <laughs> How old am I? Uh, 12 now. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I know so. Tiziano? <laughs> I like QPR. I love QPR because um, they work hard. <laughs> not because your dad plays. <laughs> not because you can't. Yeah, not because your dad makes it. <laughs> um, I love QPR because it make me like. It's a very funny like situation. Like uh, we have two in, two individuals here. The um, his missus, the man, his mama, his wife is at home. Uh, celebrating his birthday alone and they are here <laughs> with us doing the podcast. I, I love that, you know. Claire, happy birthday. Um, don't be mad at the boys. <laughs> you can't help them. So that is happy birthday to George's yeah. mum, Claire. And it's her birthday today? Yeah. yeah. She's 23, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think so. My mum t tells me that, but I, I think she's like 36. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. This is been... naughty step, George. <laughs> this has been brilliant, Ali. First of all, thank you very, very much. You're a great sport. You. I think this is the third time, third time that you've been on the podcast. You've always got time uh, to speak to us. It's always brilliant having you on. So thank you very much. Um... <laughs> thank you. To can, I just, can, yeah. Can I just wish someone a happy birthday before I forget? It was he started. Is it Claire? No, no, this is a change. No, um, Callum Hull is 11, so happy birthday, Callum, and your dad gets to be drunk regularly and tell him to stop it. <laughs> happy birthday, Callum. Um, thank you very much to our... How many have we got? Seven. Our seven... But they do well, though. Seven yeah. juniors. <laughs> They did much, much better than us. Um, and, and they don't forget to come on again next season when you get a new contract. <laughs> Exactly. Um, thank you for coming on. Thank you, everybody here who's helped make the... Um, what are we calling it? The kids are all right, Chris. Yeah, I think the kids are all right, or the kids uh, are Ali right. The kids are all right. <laughs> thank you very much uh, for everybody for uh, helping with the show. This has been Open All Ours. Well done. The QPR podcast is sponsored by XL Environmental, a pest control company based in Northolt and the Southeast. 
They provide for all your pest control needs along with bird control, hazardous waste removal and ground maintenance. And they're Rangers fans, so if you call them on 0845 11 6 11, mention our podcast for a 10% discount. UPR, UPR, Rangers are on the 